Welcome to Laptop Radio. Today's topic is why crypto is the biggest thing to happen in the history of humanity. We have Lou Corner here. He is partner at Blockchain Co Investors. Hello. Hello. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Exciting time for crypto. Yes, I'm super excited about chatting with you about cryptocurrency. The topic is why cryptocurrency is the biggest thing to happen in the history of humanity. First, let's talk about your background. Tell us your story. Sure. So I was a Wall Street analyst. I ran two digital companies, including the largest social network before MySpace called Bolt. Became an angel investor, a VC focused on investing in tech companies founded in Israel. And then on June 29th, 2017, I saw the crypto light and I've been crypto 24 24- by seven ever since. I'm an active blogger with over 200 posts and an active investor at uh, Blockchain Co-Investors. And what is Blockchain Co-Investors? So Blockchain Co-Investors started off as a crypto fund to fund. We launched our first fund in 2019 and we invested in 12 of the leading VCs around the world. And we had our first close on Blockchain Co-Investors Fund 2 and we've added three more VC. So we're now invested in 15 of the leading crypto VCs. And as LPs in their funds, they are kind enough to give us be a funnel for us then to do deals. One is one-off deals known as kind of special purpose vehicles. If we get a, a more than a million dollars of allocation in a deal that we like, we'll set up our own special purpose vehicle. The minimum investment in the fund to fund is 250000 in the crypto SPVs that we do, it's 25000 And then if we can't get a million and incur the costs associated with setting up a special purpose vehicle, we bring the opportunity to AngelList. We have a crypto syndicate on AngelList called Blockchain Co-Investors. You have to be an accredited investor on AngelList. And then if you want, you join our syndicate. And when we bring a deal, we make it available to our LPs in the syndicate. They each get to decide if they want to invest and how much. And so those are the three products of Blockchain Co-Investors. Tell us about how you first learned of cryptocurrency, because I think it's still really new, but I think different people have different history in terms of how and when they learn about cryptocurrency. Yeah, not only does everybody have a different story, but I also think that crypto is infinite. So I think when everybody sees it, not only they have a different story, but everybody actually sees something different based on the prism of their life and how they view the world based on the unique experiences of their life. But I was first introduced to Bitcoin really when I started to take it seriously. In late 2013, a friend called me and asked me what I thought of Bitcoin. I said, I thought it was stupid. And he said, I just made a big bet on it. I think it's a thing. And if I were you, I'd I'd learn about it. See, this is one of the smartest people I've ever met. So if he says it's a thing, I want to learn about it. And so one of the first things I do when I want to learn about something is I'll hold a webinar. And so in late 2013, I held a webinar with Barry Silbert from DCG and Chris Larson from Ripple. And I'm able to get these on because I had a newsletter back then that was more general that had a big following. And so I could get people on a webinar. And I've done more than 100 of these webinars over the last 10 years. And that Bitcoin webinar in late 2013 was the only one that was live blogged by the Wall Street Journal. (laughs) <laughs> and they live blogged it by starting a webinar on Bitcoin being held by Lou Kerner, Wall Street's Bitcoin expert. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, my first minute in Bitcoin and I was Wall Street's Bitcoin expert. And, and from that, I was invited to speak at the New York Bitcoin Associations, which was at the time the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world in New York. And I spent about maybe 10% of my time learning about Bitcoin and trying to understand it. I'm a domainer. I bought BitcoinWallet.com. I'm a VC. I, I invest in a company called Change Tip that would allow you to tip people on Reddit and Bitcoin. But after a year of looking at it and the whole time the price was going down, I moved on to what I thought were shinier objects. And then when ICOs were going crazy in mid-2017, I held another conference with four thought leaders, one from Bancor, which had just had the biggest ICO, one from Tezos, who the following week then had an ICO to surpass Bancor, and Olaf Karras and we, who's a big crypto VC. I think he's you know 22 years old now. And uh, Olaf said something that was like, if you're putting together a puzzle and you don't know what it is, and then you get a piece and you put it in and all of a sudden you can see what the puzzle is. 
And I saw the crypto light at that moment. There's actually a word for it called a gestalt shift, where one moment you see the world is one thing and then you get new information and the world is something completely different. Uh, and in that moment, the, the way the world for me was completely different was I came of the belief that crypto was the biggest thing to happen in the history of humanity. Awesome. And then why is cryptocurrency so special? Why do you think it's the biggest thing to happen in the history of mankind? Well, I think for the first time in history, we now have a technology that enables us to solve for the community. So humanity up until this point of time has worked by solving for the man in the middle. And that's great if you're the man in the middle or his kid, but for most of the other people in the world that hasn't worked out so well. How is crypto different? What is valuable and how is it different from money? So Bitcoin has a set of properties that the world has never seen before. Mm -hmm. And so we're still in the early days of really understanding and appreciating what Bitcoin is or can be. In my view, what Bitcoin has emerged as is the world's greatest store of value. So for the last 5,000 years, Bitcoin or gold has been the globe's store of value. And it primarily had that because as opposed to money, which every government in history has debased and every currency in history eventually goes to zero, gold has never gone to zero because governments just can't print more. And so Bitcoin has that same property, which made gold the greatest store of value ever. But then on top of that, Bitcoin has all of these other properties that make it vastly better than gold, one of which is it's a lot lighter than gold. If you want to take a million dollars in gold and go somewhere, that's really hard. If the government doesn't like you because, I don't know, you're Jewish or you're black or for whatever reason, the government may not like you, they can take all your gold away wherever you have it. If you're holding in a bank, most people today hold gold in ETFs that are at their brokerage company that can get confiscated by the government. Bitcoin has a lot of properties that nothing else has ever had. And who knows what else it will be in addition to a store of value. I don't think it's going to be a currency. Currency, I think, needs to have a number of properties that Bitcoin doesn't. But I think being a store of value plus whatever else it is. I recently wrote a piece on why I think Bitcoin can get to a million dollars in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is the money. I think with cryptocurrency, there is a concept of community, which is different from marketing. It's different from money because money is very individualized and commercialized. And I think with cryptocurrency, it's a little bit different because it's a little bit decentralized and there is a heavy focus on community. So what is community? So to me, community is an ecosystem where everybody gets more out of it than they put in, which is magical. And if you think about how big communities can become, I, I think to some degree, communities can become as big as the difference, the delta between how much it costs the community to manufacture what it, it makes and how much the community values that at. And so religions are the biggest communities because they produce faith and it doesn't cost anything to produce faith and people value it very highly. And I think Bitcoin is going to emerge as another massive community mm -hmm. because it's something that, that we can manufacture at zero and it has today $40,000 of value per Bitcoin <laughs> or 35000 whatever the price is today. And there are very few things in the history of the world that have ever been made for zero with that much value placed on it. Art, art's made out of thin air and some art pieces. One person paints something and to some degree, that's what happened here is Satoshi painted this virtuoso. You built community over the last decade with Crypto Mondays and you host stable coins are killing it. Besides investing in the ecosystem, what are some insights that you have uh, and you wanted to share about building community from a more practical perspective? Because I think when people talk about community, it sounds really good. But when we have a true community, there might be different perspective, different vibes in different communities. How does it get united? And you do decentralized community better than a lot of the people. So... 
Is there trust in the people who are decentralizing it? How does that all work? My favorite tagline for Bitcoin is rules without rulers, mm -hmm. because we need rules. Mm -hmm. You asked uh, an interesting question about how do you unify a community? Mm -hmm. And I don't think communities need to be unified. I just think they have to share some core values and some core things that they're trying to achieve via the community. Mm -hmm. I think there can be drastically different views about how you achieve that. I, for one, believe forking is a feature. It's not a bug. When I first got into crypto and I experienced all of the vitriol, I, I found it very upsetting. And, and now I think the, the vitriol is a feature. It's not a bug. It, it turns out that revolutions are messy. You also invest in cryptocurrency. In the last couple of years, there has been a lot of scams and fraud. How do you mitigate your risk? as an investor and, and still have faith and believe in the ecosystem that crypto is going to change the course of history and humanity. I've written a lot about how people see the crypto light. And, you know, and one of the problems is it's still really hard to see it. Mm -hmm. I think it's getting easier every day. And to some degree, while I think education is great and I'm all for it, I, I think most people don't want to be educated. Most people it's too hard. It's too time consuming. There are other things they like better than getting educated on anything. And nobody had to educate me on how to use my mobile phone, my iPhone. I use it because I could pick it up. I knew how to use it and it gave me immense value. And I think crypto you know, is on its way to being there. We're still in the kind of pre Netscape browser evolution of the internet. Before Netscape, it was very hard to use the internet. And so nobody did. And that's where we are in crypto. It's still so hard to use crypto that the number of people who actually are investing in it or use it really rounds to zero. It's a tiny, minuscule portion of the population. Awesome. And what do you think we need? What kind of innovation do we need now today that brings the ecosystem of cryptocurrency forward? Again, it's about giving people value. And the easier it is for them to extract that value, the more people that will do it. In, in analogy I use, I ran a company, the, the top level domain.tv in 2000, and we were the biggest streamers of video on the internet. Mm -hmm. But it sucked because the pipes weren't fat enough and it was just a really bad experience. And in 2005, I said, okay, the internet pipes are finally fat enough that video is going to be a thing. And I looked at buying three of the leading video up load sites here are all tiny. Mm -hmm. And I ended up buying the largest one. And mm -hmm. about a month later, we were two times bigger than the second one. And, and somebody uploaded a video called Lazy Sunday onto the second biggest site. It was an Andy Samberg Saturday Night Live video. And that day, that website became the, the fastest growing website in the history of the world. And mm -hmm. six months later, it was bought by Google for 1.5 billion. And, and that's what we need. We need our Lazy Sunday moment. We need somebody to create a product that tons of people are not only going to want to use, but are going to be able to use without actually getting educated on how to use it. What that is, I don't know. But what I'm confident about is that there are so many brilliant people. The smartest people in the world are leaving their jobs at Goldman Sachs and McKinsey to come to crypto because they're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. And there are so many of them trying so many things that it's just a matter of time before we get our lazy Sunday moment. Awesome. And is there anything else that you wanted to share that I have not asked you? I think I'm often asked what advice, you know, I would give to people getting in mm -hmm. at this point. And I would really say two things. One is educate yourself, learn and read. I think the best return on investment in most people's lives in terms of their time today is getting smarter about crypto and how it works and how they can make it a part of their life, whether it's just their portfolio or their job. And what mm -hmm. they do. And if the second piece is if you want to make it your job, just get any job. Just go out there. There are tons of projects that need help. They, they won't pay you anything. But it's the easiest industry in the world to get an internship in and to start adding value and to start learning and to start making contacts. And in 15 minutes, you'll have been in crypto longer than half of the new people who came to crypto in the last 15 minutes. Because that's how fast this industry is growing. And you get the best opportunities in life when you're someplace it's growing because they're in need of people to step up and they're just looking around who can I give more responsibility to 
take the time, educate yourself. If you're not there yet, take the time and read and talk to people. And it takes work. Eventually, 100% of the people I know who spent the time have seen the crypto light and it changed their lives. Awesome. And then one last question. What do you think about governance and blockchain? Everything's a double-edged sword, right? There's no free lunch. And there are massive benefits of decentralization, but there are also things that we still really struggle with. One is token economics. How do we properly reward the people in the community who are really adding value? And how do we take money away from the people who are detracting value? Right In the real world, if you lie and cheat and steal for 50 years, you can become president. But, but we're building, trying to build a better world. And, and so token economics is you know, in its very early days. And in one of my first thought pieces in 2017, I wrote how I'm looking forward to PhD students in token economics and governance <laughs> and consensus. And uh, at a Crypto Mondays last year, we had the University of Vienna professor who has a master's program in token economics. And, and, but you asked about governance and consensus, and that's the other thing. How do we govern ourselves? I don't think Bitcoin be, can become a currency because I think it would have to make some changes to optimize for being a currency. And because its governance is so broken, it, it can't. And in fact, part of the reason that, that it's a great store of value is it doesn't change much. And so we're early days of governance and consensus as well and how we run a decentralized organization. But the only way that you learn is by doing, and the amount of doing is accelerated at a very rapid pace. So the amount of learning is growing at a very rapid pace. And in my mind, the risks are that we're never able to create token economics at work and, or we're never able to create governance consensus that really works. But I would say the other thing that gives me great hope, in addition to the brilliant people who are there, and that's really the, the number one reason. The number two reason is we're competing against the real world. And that's, at the moment, a really low bar. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Lou. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.